Good morning, councillors, CEO, directors, staff, and ladies and gentlemen. The traditional custodians of the land on which we are privileged to meet today represent a human link dating back over 2,000 generations as part of the oldest living culture on the planet. We pay our respects to the Indigenous Elders past and present and recognise their continuing connection to our land and our community. Now this council meeting has been streamed live for the first time, recorded and published in accordance with the council's standing orders, including published on the council's website. So to those present in the gallery today, by attending this public meeting of the council, you are consenting to your image, voice and comments being recorded and published, and your comments will form part of the live stream and the subsequent report recording. And you're advised that they may be subject, or you're advised that you may be subject to legal action if your actions today result in inappropriate or unacceptable behaviour and or comments. So we have to say that. So thank you very much. And I declare open the, uh, the meeting for the Mackay Regional Council for the 13th of March. Our opening prayer today is uh, Reverend Dr Julia Pittman. Reverend Pittman, thank you very much. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord of life and God of our salvation, guide this meeting of Mackay Regional Council and all those who direct its business. Grant your blessings on the strengths of the members and your mercy and forgiveness where they fall short of your hopes for them. Sustain them in their work, support them in their fears and strengthen them in their resolve to seek and pursue the peace, harmony and welfare of all of the people of our area. Give us joy in public service, due pride in success and the approval of a good conscience in all that we do. May your Holy Spirit so work amongst us that our Mackay Regional Council may be renewed in truth, beauty and order, and in happiness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Reverend Dr Pittman. <coughs> So nobody up to on council business, no apologies. Are there any condolences? No condolences, conflicts of interests. Um, we have uh, Councillor Casey, Councillor Mann and Councillor May is perceived conflicts in uh, item 11.3. We'll deal with that as it comes. No further conflicts to declare. Let's move on to the 7.1 is the confirmation of minutes, the ordering meeting of the 27th of February. The minutes have been circulated. So we'd like to move their adoption, Councillor. Councillor Camp, seconded by Councillor May. Uh, any discussion? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. No business arising out of those minutes that we've been notified of. There's no Merrill minutes today. Let's move on to the uh, consideration. Let's move on to the consideration of our, our reports. 10.1 is the draft minutes of the Character and Heritage Advisory Committee. Councillor Mann moves. Seconded by Councillor Englert. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Worship. Look, I have made some notes because there's a lot of stuff discussed at the meeting. So the ENSAC and Armistice Day grant funding, uh, a project summary report has been finalised and hopefully that will come to us in the next meeting. Out of 34 memorials that have been investigated, there's potentially 18 sites that meet the criteria, so that'll be really exciting to see that. The application to consider the Serena Air Raid Shelter Heritage Listing has been submitted to Department of Environment Science and the department has commenced its formal assessment. So that will also be really exciting because I believe it's one of a few, very few left in Queensland. Um, in regard to the popular heritage walks conducted by Bernice Wright, we have acknowledged that we would perhaps like to train some more people to do those walks, so councillors May, Englert and I will have some talks with Bernice about that. Um, we previous, previously discussed if the Serena Field of Dreams project could be entered into the National Trust Awards and the guidelines will be published shortly so we'll see whether that meets that criteria. Um, officers have created our Character and Heritage Advisory Committee wish list for future projects and it will guide the committee in 2019 as to what we want to see achieved. The Commonwealth Bank building will be a permanent agenda item, given the interest around that, and I can confirm that Council's contractor did clean up the site at the end of February 
it does look a lot better. I am of the understanding there are some other talks separately going on with the owner and hopefully we might see that uh, start some action there soon. Now, there are a couple of particular actions from the committee that need to be noted as recommendations, and that is that the Character and Heritage Advisory Committee supports strategic planning investigating a heritage trail throughout the region and further asks that council offices bring a draft concept and costings to create the trail for consideration in the 1920 budget deliberations. And when we talk about heritage trail, it's not only buildings, it's places and cultures that have led us to where we are now. Um, and we recognise there's lots of different areas of the region to celebrate, including things like Ram Chandra Park, Cathy Freeman Oval. They're all part of the history of our region. Um, the character and heritage also asks that council allocates resources to investigate and implement a heritage app, including potential costs and maintenance requirements. So that was also as part of the, um, the report that's come to council. So I'm happy to move that the draft character and heritage advisory committee minutes dated 8th of February be received and recommendations as described in the draft minutes be noted to progress by officers. Thanks, Councillor Mann. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion of the adoption of this uh, uh, heritage advisory committee. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. Move on, 10.2 is the draft minutes of the Regional Economy Working Group. Pretty well straightforward. Councillor Cam moves, seconded by Councillor Mann. Councillor Cam. Um, thank you, Worship. I'll be very brief. Uh, it's just uh, this, and as the councillors will see in the minutes, uh, the group met where, uh, by way of review of the City Centre levy, will be conducted um, as part of the budget process that's forthcoming as well as the mountain bike uh, strategy structure, our governance structure framework will be discussed by councillors in a future briefing. And uh, as outlined in the minutes, Councillor England uh, is to be nominated as a, our representative on the City Safe Committee. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Cam. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion of adoption. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried. Draft minutes of the Sport and Rec Advisory Committee. Councillor Payton moves, seconded by Councillor England. Councillor Payton. Uh, thank you, Russia. Uh, Sport and Rec Advisory Committee is about one year in. Uh, we've had a uh, change of chair as I've gone in that position. Uh, so we took the opportunity to actually uh, review with the progress with the committee to see how things had gone so far. But we also reviewed the uh, terms of reference, which, uh, as well as the uh, sporting achievement acknowledged acknowledgement policy and both of those will come to council eventually. Uh, we took feedback on uh, the committee on how the sports expo uh, went and everybody was quite happy with the outcome of that expo. Uh, and officers also gave a uh, overview of the 2018 to 2028 sport and rec strategy and we've actually pulled meetings uh, to monthly at the moment, uh, just so that we can get a full understanding of that uh, strategy and really get our teeth into it. But I'm happy to move that the uh, Sport and Rec Advisory Committee meetings minutes uh, be accepted. Thanks, Councillor Payton. Speaker against. Are there any other speakers? For the motion, those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 10.4 of the draft minutes of the Sustainability and Environment Advisory Committee. Uh, so we have moved that Councillor Cam moves, seconded by Councillor Mann. Councillor Cam. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. This is only uh, the second meeting held by the Sustainability and Environment Advisory Committee uh, with our new membership and uh, new strategic intent, uh, whereby our officers actually just shared Council's sustainability strategy. And we also discussed some of the proposed items that will be coming forward in the budget, but obviously that's a decision for council. Uh, it is a new group where we are trying to work uh, work collaboratively with industry to seek opportunities around uh, strategic um, areas of where we can work together and basically uh, achieve more funding for the for our region in, in this space as well. So, yeah. good, it's a good report. Uh, speaker against? Any other speakers? For the motion, those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried. So move on to the officers' reports now. 11.1 is the Office of the Mayor and CEO monthly report for March CEO. Uh, thank you, Worship. Good morning, councillors. Uh, very pleasing again. No lost time injuries across our whole organisation for February. Uh, good outcome. Uh, the recent announcement uh, last week of funding for the uh, for the several boat ramps is a great outcome for us and consistent with our fishing strategy, uh, with most of the focus around us around CCTV and lighting, which has been a lot of feedback around recreational fishing. So that's great to see. 
Um, uh, great to see the mark finally opened on Saturday. How ironic is the sun has shown from the day it's been opened, but the six weeks prior it didn't stop raining. Um, we have some finish shop things to do, as you would have noticed, around some landscaping. We'll finish that up as quickly as possible, so all very pleased. I know the Mayor did that at the formal opening, but I'd just like to acknowledge the project team. Um, and also, behind the scenes, the project control group that, that basically gives guidance to the project team, which is a number of our directors and so on, also did a fantastic job. We're nine days late to what we told councillors 18 months ago, um, 9th of March, and uh, we're on budget, so I think that's a very, very good outcome. Uh, by the staff. Um, LJQ have planned a special meeting for April 2nd about the state local government uh, reforms and the Mayor and Deputy Mayor will go down and represent Council on a number of those 10 motions. Um, the ELI for the wave pool will be out in the next week, we're just finalising that now. Um, we had a meeting with the community earlier this week, it must have been uh, last night or the night before, uh, on the Marini Heritage Precinct, it was well received and we're starting to do a mini master plan um, and we'll come back to Council in the next month or so to talk about next steps. The preparations for the 2019-20 budget are well advanced and we're working through that complex process. And, um, and Councillor May last week as well, as long as some staff in CUFUS, um, we had a strategic directions group for the SES and um, I'm sure Councillor May will articulate far better than I, but it was very, very pleasing to see that there's a number of major initiatives being taken on by the state uh, around some of the key strategic areas that we've been talking about here. Um, you know, the proof's in the pudding and that they deliver on those, but it was good to see, I think, that uh, they ticked off on all the things that we've had concerns about that we hopefully will work through, including flexible membership and some other things. So uh, that was a good meeting. Thanks, CEO. Good report. Um, the questions for the CEO, Councillor Camp. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, my question is around uh, the pe people and culture uh, where we have undertaken a review of the current process uh, to reshape the approach of recruitment. Uh, given some of the tricky and technical aspects of the, of the recruitment, uh, my question is around, in particular, the museum's coordinator and some of those other um, really important roles but that are quite technical or we need some experience potentially beyond what we have locally. Is there a strategy in place around, with, with the tightening uh, of the current economy mm -hmm. and, and job vacancies? Are we looking outside the region? Yeah, good question, CEO. So, yeah. yeah, it's a very, very good question. Thanks, Councillor Cam. So our focus initially has been is um, we believe for some key roles, we probably don't have the same right level in the recruitment room. Um, so we've, we're standardised now to always have people, culture persons in there to make sure the process is, is pure. Um, so we're working through that. And uh, Fanny, you mentioned one of those roles. We've had a couple of issues where the tightening of the market is um, we can't find super applicants. And, um, so we've got to make sure we're not um, dismissing good candidates out of the same, but we also want to make sure we, these important roles get done. Um, I'm pretty sure we have to take into account, and I'll come back and let you know, but I think it's a very, very good point around making sure we've got the right experience uh, through our governance process on those interviews. So, for example, I'm actually involved in the manager of court com comms interviews, which is the first manager's role I've been involved in since I've been here, mainly because of the importance of the interaction that happens with the community in this group. So uh, I think we need to make sure we take that all into account. We'll take that on board. Thank you. Thanks. Other questions? Councillor May. Um, thank you, Mr May. Um, just in relation to um, your report and, and our alliances and, and support that we give to a whole range of other organisations, I was just wondering whether it's possible for RSDC to be added into your report, given that we now have a formal arrangement with them. So it would be good to um, to add them in either in the, the uh, GW comms section or perhaps in the, I'm not sure they fit in the tourism and economic development space, but, but I thought it would be appropriate if that's okay. No, certainly, we can do that. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Councillor May. Other questions, Councillor G? Uh, regarding Camilleri Street District Park, and for the benefit of Ethan and Flynn, who I'm pretty sure will be watching today, uh, we're still on track for completion of Stage 1 by the end of this year. So, uh, uh, that's the funding agreement deadlines, Councillor. So, um, uh, I know we're splitting up the tender to make sure that the million dollar state funded component, which was very strictly applied by the state, uh, that tender is probably going to go out while we're sorting the other 670,000 component, which was ours. Uh, that will definitely be going out, and we have every intention to um, do it as per the funding agreement, which we're obliged to do. Thank you. Other questions? Councillor Bonaventura. Just on page 74, uh, Your Worship, just in relation to the, uh, the monsoon's trough that devastated Townsville, but made its way down as far as the, the top end of our council area. 
Um, I noticed that uh, we've had damage to Chelmans Road and Dalrymple Road, and also that bridge, re bridge replacement at uh, Boundary Creek. But I was just wondering, is this completely covered by uh, <coughs> Category B and D funding, or do we need to put some uh, funding towards it? Okay, so we have a program there. So, yeah. uh, we're still, we've put in for the funding, we're still finalising the exact scope, which as you know from Cyclone Debbie took a lot of time with the state. Um, we're designing it as if we're replacing the lot. Um, you know, I believe we could be struggling to get betterment, uh, which like we did last time. Mm. So um, we're, we're confident that we'll get the scope required, but we're still, uh, we're still working with the state on the detail. They'll be waiting for information from us on the cost, so we're only just looking at it now. So they'll want to know the cost, what we've included before they formally sign off on it all. Okay. CEO and I had a meeting uh, yesterday with the recovery coordinator, uh, Major General Smith. Uh, there is another bucket of money that the Premier is going to announce shortly, albeit very, very small. Um, so there are, are other options. Hmm. But yes, it's certainly on the radar, Councillor Bonamature. You have another question? I do, Your Worship. Just in relation to um, that bridge replacement there at um, Boundary Creek, I notice in the report it states that we've now got to include a fish, fish passage. Um, do staff have any concerns of possible time delays in relation to obtaining all the permits required in that area? Because from the previous one we did, I do understand there was some delays. So yeah. uh, We have no concerns at the moment. Our biggest concern will be getting full sign off on the funding as the priority. I, um, we, we can start working on that. But again, you need to do the design. You need to give it to the state that incorporates that. So it's the chicken and the egg. Right. So we have to get the design signed off with the state and that cost, which includes the new fishway. And then you can put the permit in for the fishway. Yep. So the first priority is the funding side, which so we, we haven't got any concerns at the moment. We've got two years to spend the funding, but that's not saying we want to take two years to replace okay. it. But we all know we're still working on Lambert's and Midpoint Beaches now, and it's nearly two years since the cyclone. Yeah. And it took us a year or so to get the funding before we even started the tenders. So we need to work through that process. And, and as part of that, you would look at removing the one third that's left of Boundary Creek and replacing it, obviously. That would be the plan. So, yeah. that, that is the plan, Excellent. and we'd be seeking that the state pay for that. Yeah. Um, and, but we just need to work through that process as well. Thank you. questions, Councillor Casey. Following on from Councillor Wallaventura about uh, Dalrymple Road, have we finished the geotech testing yet? See so, yeah. uh, my I, I haven't seen the detail yet, Councillor Casey. I think it's quite a technical project. Um, I, we haven't seen the report or all well, that is yet, so I don't think we have. Thank you. We take that on notice and let you know. Yep. Okay. Further questions, Councillor Payton. Uh, thank you, Russia. Just in relation to the small scale solar installations, uh, it seems to be travelling along quite well. I was just wondering, we've got a few changes in the scope there, so I was just wondering how our budget was going with that. that we see a budget changes. question? Yeah. So, yeah. It will be on budget. So we've had ups and downs on, on either one, but nothing to concern us on. We had a contingency in there as well to allow for some of those things, and we're more than comfortable with that. We will move that. Okay. Councillor Walker. Uh, in the Greater Witch Sunday Council of Mayors report, it talks about the council comparison tool. And I was just wondering how much use are we making of that with this council? We're not using it too much at the moment, Councillor Walker. I think we will. Uh, I think you know we have in our council a lot of our water and, and waste and sewerage is probably leading in Queensland in those areas around setting that data, which is the big components of our of our organisation. So we, we think it's a valuable tool, but we haven't seen the need right now to, to do a lot of work on it because we think we're focusing on the right things at the moment. Okay. Other questions? Somebody would like to move the report's adoption, Councillor Cam, seconded by Councillor Casey. Councillor Cam. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I really wanted to highlight and thank the CEO and his team around the cross-collaboration uh, on two major projects, obviously the Mackay Arc to Jim, Carles and uh, Stuart and, and Carly and the rest of the team, but you know, it doesn't go without saying that there were lots of departments, everything from infrastructure services with the drainage upgrade out there next to the facility, right through to Corp Cons and in particular the Sport and Rec um, team. Uh, and in particular also Angela Hayes who came in sort of at the back end of that to ensure our community consultation uh, was undertaken with all of those important stakeholders. It was a great day out there. I did miss your race, Mayor, but we won't talk about you didn't that. Miss, you didn't miss much. Um, <laughs> but uh, certainly I know anyone who is a water enthusiast, and I know there's some in the room today, the water is pretty schmick. So uh, with that, uh, I would also like to make mention and highlight obviously the 
the project uh, that's been funded under Building Better Regions. And this council, some years ago, when we first got in, decided recreational fishing was going to be a strategic focus for us. And this really is, a, is delivering on that commitment and that strategy, so recognition to the federal government, but in particular, our grant writers and David McKendry, the executive officer, and the coordination across uh, infrastructure services around this. And when you really look at all of those uh, boat ramp upgrades in particular, the car parking, CCTV and lighting, and what that will deliver across our region, both from a livability perspective, but also a tourism experience, uh, it's a fantastic outcome. And it touches all parts of our region from as far as Campbell Beach, uh, Northern mm. Beaches, up to the Northern part of Murray Creek and Halliday Bay as well. So um, Thanks, congratulations Councilor. to the team. Uh, here, here. I think that as the whole council, we endorse uh, those uh, sentiments in terms of congratulations to the team, particularly around the ARC opening. Councillor May, did you wish to speak against or for? Oh, thank are you. There speakers, <laughs> are there speakers against? Speaker for Councillor May. Thank you. I, I just really wanted to, to, a couple of things I'd like to highlight, and, and that is our shovel ready projects. We've got nine projects there across the entire council region, so we, we've spread out our. Um, our um, projects into the, the region as, as a whole. And um, there's green lights on all of them and they're progressing well to be best place for this council to um, talk to the federal government about um, possible funding of some of those projects in the upcoming election. So I just wanted to really mention that and congratulate the team that, are, that have been working on a, a huge variety of projects across our um, council area. The other thing that I did want to highlight was, and it's not, uh, it's to do with the report of the SES Strategic Directions Group. And at the meeting, and the minutes will come to the next meeting, I'm I, um, I sure, but um, I really just wanted to mention the, the review that CUPIS has done of their organisational structure and what that means for our council. The review has, has concluded that they are going to establish seven regions throughout um, Queensland, of which a regional assistant commissioner will be appointed to each region. So I, when I heard this, I was, I was very excited because I thought, hallelujah, they are finally getting the picture that the, the, every region is different and to have a, a high ranking officer in um, control in a particular region is really a plus. And I think um, working with CUFAS to, to um, make sure that we take full advantage of that change I think will be a good outcome for our council in regards to um, not only SES but our emergency response to disasters as a whole. Yeah. The other other two parts that they're, they're really working hard on is the membership and, and what that might look like and, and the requirements of that in SES going forward and also the training and how that's delivered. So there, there is um, threads of encouragement that we, we will be able to achieve something with the strategic directions group and um, we look forward to continuing that work. So, thank you. Thanks, Councillor May. Other speakers? Your motion then, those in favour? Sorry, Sorry. Councillor Bonaventure, you're speaking for. Obviously. For the motion, Your Worship. Yeah. Look, just basically, uh, over the last two years, I have questioned the CEO many times over the ability to deliver the project at the mark on, uh, on budget and uh, on time. And uh, I have to now here stand and say that I acknowledge the success of that um, and, uh, and the job that was done and the success. Um, so uh, if I could, I could also echo Councillor Cam's words that uh, pass on congratulations to all those involved in delivering that project on time and on budget. Thank you. Can I ask anybody in the gallery to turn their phones off, please? Um, really, if we get interrupted by, by phones, you'll have to leave the gallery, so uh, thanks very much. Thanks, Councillor Bonaventura. Are there uh, other, other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Are you against? The motion's carried. Thank you. Okay. Community and uh, Client Services Monthly Review for February. CEO. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, very comprehensive report. Fantastic to see 17 students and five chaperones for our. We were, we were talking about a year ago about the death knell, and uh, <laughs> very, very pleasing to see that we've had a. Uh, a major interest. So I think that's a great. Um, I think the sister cities group has done a good job, but our staff have been out promoting the schools. I think that's fantastic. Uh, great to see the MEC attendance is up 30% on the mm -hmm. same time last year. Uh, the footy weekend with both the NRL and AFL went very well, and just pass on out, out to our team, but mostly to the Cutters and Harrow Park, who put on very successful projects, and, and again showcased uh, Mackay. 
Um, MRC was successful in the CAT-C funding application for under the state-funded bushfire recovery program. It's great to see we get another resource there to help. Um, it's also pleasing to see we have now 15 of the 23 applications under the Betty Community Building Fund now complete, finally after a little while. Uh, and also very, very pleasing to see an ELO has been recruited for Bloomsbury, which I think that program is also a credit to our emergency department to work through on that. Thank you. Thanks, CEO. Questions? We'll see you at the council. I've got a mate. question, and it's in relation to um, the MEC and events on page 75 there, where you see that the Serena Community Bank has sponsored. Um, the, the program is part of, part of the Festival of Arts. I, I, I don't know whether I need to publicly declare an interest because I am the chair of the Serena Community Bank branch, um, given that we're not making a decision, but I just really wanted to note okay, that. Okay, well, certainly we can note that. Yeah. Thanks very much, Councillor May. I don't think there's any issue there. Um, are there other questions, Councillor Bonamagura? Just on <clears throat> page 116, Your Worship. I note that uh, there's a, uh, under the environmental health and school sessions, there's a very large drop. Yes, we've got another four months left to the end of the financial year, but 2017 we had 918, 2018 709, and this year to date only 25. Just uh, a bit of background possibly as the reason. Are you, are, are you able to give that to CEO? Do you want to take I am. I am. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it's pretty clear. Sorry, they're calendar years, not financial years for this graph. They should mention that. We'll make sure that's changed. That's so we're only two months into the year. There's six right. programs planned for the next 10 months. We're very confident that we'll get the numbers. Thank but, you for that uh, simple explanation. Yeah. Yeah. But we will make sure the graph is clear because it's one of very few that are calendar years. Yep. Thank you. Other questions? Councillor Angler. Thank you, Worship. Uh, notwithstanding the mentioned uh, current view of internal CUFUS uh, structure, on page electronic 112, uh, membership non-active groups. Uh, recommendation regarding the future viability of these groups is pending a review by CUPIS. So I would hope that we are leading that review of groups and uh, with CUPIS, but they are not the lead agency on that. That's right. See ya. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. I can, I can assure you that we'll be involved in, mm -hmm. in that. So the word's probably a little bit unclear. Thanks, Councillor. Thank you. Further questions? No further questions? Would somebody like to move the uh, report's adoption, please? Moved by Councillor Payton. Seconded by Councillor Bonaventure. Councillor Payton. Thank you, Your Worship. Another great uh, report by the uh, community uh, department there. Uh, a lot of work going on in different areas there, especially the Sports Expo I bring up again, which uh, was headed by uh, Councillor Kevin Casey. Uh, but I would like to acknowledge the two officers that have done a lot of work in that area, which was uh, Linda Single and also, sorry, Mojita. <laughs> Liz Crane, uh, that put a lot of work into that area and uh, made a success of 7,500 people coming through the doors. So it's great to see. Thanks, Thank Councillor Payton. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura. Oh, just to uh, congratulate staff on the Chinese New Year, Your Worship, having attended the event that afternoon or evening. Uh, it was very good. Uh, I, I do believe they've got the numbers a little bit wrong. I believe there's well over 200 people there. It says 200 in our report but uh, I think uh, it was well attended and enjoyed by those who were there. So thank you to the staff that were part of that. Thanks, Councillor Bonamagio. Councillor Valley, you're speaking for the motion. Um, I note in the report the mentions of our uh, activities in health and regulatory services. Um, I'm very pleased to see that our uh, mosquito control programs are going well. I'd like to highlight that it's not just the dengue fever uh, issue that can, is concerning. There has been anecdotally, I must say, a bit of a spike in diagnoses of things such as Ross River, which is spread by the, the, the same vector. So once again, I'm very pleased to see that. Um, in the biosecurity issues, peacock bass, I think it's um, good to see we're trying to do something about it. But once again, I raise the issue at this um, point that all over our region, we're seeing seeding of things such as rat's tail and um, sickle pod and various other weed pests. We see an article in the um, Mercury about the uh, red witch weed. Um, I believe that we should uh, redouble our efforts and our focus on control of pest species, be they fauna or flora in our region. And um, I look forward to us making some sort of dent in the problem. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bella. Any other speakers? Councillor May, you're speaking for. Just four things. Just one item that I'd like to touch on, and, and the CEO did touch on it, but the, the Youth Ambassador Program 
Um, I, I really want to send my congratulations to Robert Ryan, our coordinator there, who has done a fantastic job of, of getting to, to the schools in our area and promoting the um, Youth Ambassador Program. And for us to end up with 17 students and five chaperones on, on this particular trip is, is we have come from numbers of four and five, so that is a fantastic effort and worthy of recognition. Thanks very much, Councillor Mayor. You certainly endorse that. Councillor Mann. Speaking for. Speaking for, yeah. thank you. Um, just in relation to Councillor Bella's comments on the, um, the pest, um, different pest plants and things around the region, Councillor May and I did attend the regional pest management group meeting. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of stakeholders around that table who are very well aware and very well involved in trying to control all these these threats to our environment. So it was a very, very successful meeting and any new threats that come up are thoroughly discussed and actions um, according, according from there. Thanks very much, Councillor Mann. No other speakers? I'll put the motion then. It's been moved by Councillor Patton, seconded by Councillor Bonaventure. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried. 11.3, we've got a couple of conflicts of interest here. Who uh, are going to step out? Now's the time to do it. Thank you very much. So, Councillor Casey, Councillor Mann, Councillor May have uh, left the room. For the consideration of the Committee to Grants Round 2 funding for 2018 2019 under 11.3. I mean, it's uh, fairly well straightforward. See, uh, there's nothing. It's great to see the Finch Hatton airstrip actually uh, was uh, the recipient of $10,000, which is a tremendous outcome for. Uh, a, a little group of people who did a great job in the bushfires. Would somebody like to move its adoption? Councillor Bonaventura, seconded by Councillor Walker. Councillor Bonaventura. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Look, uh, it was a big round. We did have 32 applications, uh, requesting a total of 181,000 odd dollars. Um, the closing, uh, by the closing date, <coughs> and it was round two of our grants. So members of the Grants Committee individually assessed all those applications prior to our meeting. And as always, Your Worship, there was some robust discussion on the merits of each application, as we only had about $93,000 to distribute in round two. The assessment panel have adopted a new scoring system this round to assist us in our discernment process. And I thank uh, fellow councillors uh, and staff for their diligence in, in doing that. It was a little bit disappointing to see some applicants did not read the criteria correctly, which did affect their chances of success uh, with winning a grant. Um, my understanding also is that staff are going to speak with those groups so that they can improve mm. their uh, application process in future if they uh, wish to uh, apply again. In the end, 23 groups were successful and they received a total of $93,853. Councillors, I'm happy to uh, support the grant funding for those groups mentioned up on the screen and look for your support. Thank you very much, Councillor Bonaventure. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Speaker, uh, sorry, Councillor G. Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I sit on this on this committee. Uh, more than happy with the outcomes. Each application is treated individually, but when you look at the list as a whole now, there's a broad range of demographics and localities. But it's very good. It's great. It's a tremendous list. So thanks very much for uh, those people who served on the committee, councillors in particular. Well done. Now, other speakers, I'll put the motion then. Those in favour. Any against? The motion's carried. Can we get the uh, three councillors back in, please? Thanks, councillors. That motion was carried unanimously. 11.4 is the new community leasing policy and uh, rating system. We've had uh, briefings about this one. It's just now formalising this uh, this particular policy for not-for-profit organisations, which will affect uh, the coming budget period. Are there any questions around this? Pretty well straightforward. Would somebody like to move its adoption? Councillor Casey, Councillor Payton seconds. Councillor Casey. I think you worship. You've said we've had enough briefings on it. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 11.5. The capital works monthly review for February. 96.2% completion rate year to date. So we're waiting for him to hit the wall, wall CEO, but he's doing pretty well. CEO. Yes. Yes. Um, no lost time injuries. Um, there has been a number of instances that have been fully investigated in the department and a real focus based on contractor management and our own employees. So it's very pleasing to see, as you see. You're working 6.1 million of works completed in February, which brings the year to date total to 76.2 million at 96%, which is very pleasing. 
the recent wet weather has had impacted on our projects, but we're continuing to monitor those closely. I think we mentioned last meeting, Eaton water supply is up and running. Um, so it's great to see that the residents out there uh, will have less hard water uh, and, uh, and, and, a, and a high quality water. Lambert's Beach and Midpoint Beach Works are well advanced and on track for completion. Um, and I, it's fair to say we had some a number of questions around Lambert's Beach and the truck movements and everything, um, but we haven't had any in the last two or three weeks, so it seems to settle down. There's making good progress there. Uh, and the Resource Centre of Excellence Detail Design and Tender Preparation is going well. Uh, we've engaged a consultant through RIM to help with the scoping of the internal works, and that's now progressing quite well. So we're very comfortable um, on where that's heading. Thank you. Thanks, CEO. Uh, questions from the CEO? Councillor Bonaventura. Just in relation to the Bakers Creek Ferris Gully uh, landscape or job that we're doing over there, I note that uh, a major contr contributor to the job is landscaping and it makes up well over 50% of the job, Your Worship. So just wanted a bit of a background as to why uh, landscaping uh, is you know, 2.3 million out of a $6 million project. So you don't have to answer that off the cuff? I'll speak, yeah, we can. Um, I'll speak very highly and then the director of engineering sure. we can answer in more detail. So this is one of those projects where we're using best practice around nutrient uh, management through wetlands and the use of uh, fauna to reduce nutrient runoff. So it's best practice. Mm. So that's why um, this particular project is was always in the scope. Um, to do this uh, as part of that, but um, the detail, I think the director can give any more detail. Director. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yes, uh, we've got a trial here, Council. We're doing a fully vegetated drain, so two objectives. One, obviously, is around the water quality that the CEO spoke about, but also about reduced maintenance. So uh, the idea of the vegetated drain is you don't obviously need to go in and, and mow it on a routine basis, so we expect over time we're going to have some reduction. Some of the funding for this comes from the developer contributions for water quality offsets. So rather than doing it in a localised uh, area, we're trying to push into a regional approach. So we're running a trial here in this section of drain to actually see how it comes about in relation to ongoing future maintenance. And then as we extend down uh, further towards Baker's Creek for future developments of that drain, and there is a, a, a regional wetlands plan for down at the bottom end of that catchment longer term as well. You Council Bonham, you your follow up? Yes, if you wouldn't mind. Just in relation to, um, you know, supposedly reducing cost with maintenance, will that take a few years before we start to achieve that? Because surely there'll be a tremendous amount of maintenance in the early period of a, a drain like this. Uh, Director? Uh, yes, Your Worship. A very good question, Councillor. Same robust discussion about internal about whether it would actually lead to a reduction in cost, but certainly that's a longer term view over time. So we're still in the um, a process of obviously planning out the drain and then there'll be an ongoing maintenance period. There certainly will have to be some sort of maintenance to go into the drain, but you avoid that routine need to go in and mow it all the time. So the expectation over time is that will reduce the maintenance cost of the section of the drain. Thank you. All right, Councillor May. I just add to that, um, Your Worship, that a lot of the um, plants that are putting being used in vegetation are being supplied by our own nursery, which is mm. a, a real plus for um, the organisation to be able to be in a position to do that. Correct. Thank you. Councillor Kemp. Thank you, Your Worship. I just have a question in relation to the key contracts that have been approved for February, in particular the Northern Beaches Community Hub mm -hmm. design of 169000 by Ethos Urban as the contractor. Uh, unless I've missed something, Council's yet to be briefed on the Northern Beaches Community Hub. Uh, so I'm just interested to understand how we have entered what's into a contract in design and what's the tender of that scope when the detail around location, what's, in, what's encapsulated in that hub has yet to be discussed with Council. Thanks, Councillor Cam. So yeah, thank you, Councillor Cam. Um, we had a brief on current members, so I won't give you the wrong date around land tenure. So this is about land tenure. So this contract is I'm looking at land options. There were six options which included the Ports building. That was the outcome of the briefing that we discussed with Council late last year. Uh, and all they're doing that is their primary focus, and the only secondary focus is pulling all the information that we've done over a long period of time and haven't done this project that well, bringing all that information around what Logan's doing and everything else as part of a document forward. They're not agreeing on what it will be. They're just collating it all and then looking at what the land options to come back and speak to council before there's any detailed design. Okay, so yeah, follow up, council. I do, thank you. So subsequent to that, they're obviously looking at an options analysis around land tenure. Uh, are they at all undertaking any stakeholder engagement around that, or has that work been done to help inform? So yeah. 
Yeah, thank you, Councillor Kim. So um, the only consultation we've agreed with them primarily is not community consultation. It's more around we did agree to speak to you know, the owner supporters building to make sure we get that correct information. So there's no community engagement in round. It's just pulling it all together, looking at land options. So as you know, out where we're looking in those land options, we don't own any land there. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at what may or may not be possible on size and demographics and in and out. And then we'll come back and talk before. And then we'll say, look, if you wanted to build this, this two hectares of land is available, it would be this cost, what do we want to do? So there's different, it's an options analysis, but without that detailed community consultation. Just subsequent Another to one. that then. I just get very concerned that we start with the building and the infrastructure instead of starting with what is the community need? And I know you have heard this before. So I just, I, I just want to ensure that the briefing that comes before council, will that incorporate all the social planning data, all the demographic data that has been requested yeah. continuously for the last yes. 18 months of this project, which to be honest, we've, we've yet to really see that to help inform this. Yeah. Yes. Uh, absolutely, categorically, that's exactly what the scope is. It's to bring all the tidbits of information that we've been providing, some demographics, not other demographics, all those other ideas, bring it all forward, plus look at what land may or may not be suitable regardless which way you want to go. That's what you're going to see. Okay, thank you. Further questions? No further questions? I'll put the motion in. Those in favour? Oh, we need a mover, first of all. <laughs> right, uh, would somebody like to move that the report be adopted? Thank you very much. Somebody like to move that. Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Casey seconds. Councillor Payton. Uh, thank you, Roger. Uh, it's great work being done in this capital directorate. Uh, it's great to see the opening of the mark facility out there, and uh, unfortunate for the rain that has held up. Um, but I, I don't think the community actually seen those sideline parts. So as well, well done. Uh, but yeah, so ninety-two percent, I think it is capital to Yep, it's also going strong. Yep. Thank you very much, yeah. Councillor Payton. Speaker against? Any other speakers? Councillor Bella, speaking for. Um, I note the uh, completion of the Eaton water supply, um, and I'm very glad that has happened. It's improved the aesthetics of water for the Eaton residents, um, and I also bring to the, to the attention and note that the funds allocated for the Kamala water supply, which has actually uh, had, ver had uh, much worse aesthetics, were transferred to this for a good, very good reason with regard to our, our budgeting. However, I do look forward to our commencement um, on the project in Kamala. Um, once again, they do have the worst water aesthetics in the region and I look forward to that being improved. Thanks very much, Councillor Bella. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 11.6 is the Bakers Creek South of Coast Stormwater Trunk Infrastructure Study. Um, this is to, to adopt this study, form our planning scheme. Are there any questions or anything? You don't need to speak to the CEO. No question, <coughs> Councillor Bonaventure, sure you got a question? Oh, well, probably one the CEO can't answer at this stage, but just in relation to the background paper, there was a few hundred pages of material there. Um, it did mention the 2008 flood level several times, mm -hmm. but I could not find anywhere where it told me that, you know, that was a, you know, a one in a hundred event, a one in 500 year event. And I would like to have known where, because I used it as a verification tool in many places, but they didn't give us uh, that I could find, and I don't maybe one of the. They didn't give us a benchmark, it, okay. As to where that was on a benchmark into a flood, uh, one in so many year flood. So Can we rectify that by uh, another addendum to the CEO? Uh, I tend to ask if you want the information or you want to change. No, I don't need to change. Yeah, just, no, information. Just, information. just information. We'll, we'll send that outside. Yeah. I know they have it. It's just obviously they used it, went through it, didn't use it, documented here. So we'll get that because I'll definitely have that information and we'll send it through to you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions? Can somebody move the report's adoption? Councillor Casey, second to Councillor Cam. Councillor Casey. Yeah, thank you, Worship. It's been a long time coming, this report, and uh, I know the residents of that area down there have suffered many times. Uh, as we all know, we're flat and the water does go that way. So basically this uh, study now gives us an idea of what we need to do, what we can do, but we have to put it in our prioritisation um, with the funds that we have available. So it's not going to be a bang, one, one hit fix. It's going to be a process of many years over uh, many uh, council budgets to put that money because it is quite significant amounts of money that need to be spent. But uh, it's great to see the uh, study finally completed. Yeah. Uh, speaker against? Any other speakers? Councillor Cam. 
Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, in particular, I just wanted to highlight as part of adopting uh, this report, our legal team will be reviewing the public notification that will go out to uh, hundreds and hundreds of residents, uh, thousands actually, in, in the South Mackay uh, precinct, uh, and in particular the Absalon Street area where there's been significant complaints um, for many years <coughs> and some of the rectification measures there that will be part of uh, upgrade of trunk infrastructure potentially in the upcoming budget or subsequent years budget. So uh, as part of this process, and I do have a bit of a bent on, on this. I really enjoy uh, the work that the officers um, go into and the level of detail. Uh, it's really important that the community understand when they receive that letter what that means for them and what that means, means for the neighbouring properties uh, with the upgrade of our mapping as well uh, across our, our, um, our flood and hazard mapping uh, across the region, in particular in emergency services as well. So thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Cam. Certainly, it's, uh, it's great to see this report Table for adoption for council, fantastic. Are there other speakers? No other speakers, I'll put the motion then. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 11.7, attendance at uh, Planning Institute. There was a change to the uh, agenda item that went out. So it's under <coughs> Councillor Walker. Um, going to this one now. Any questions? No questions? Could somebody move? Councillor Cam moves. Councillor Mann seconds. Councillor Cam. No, okay, pretty well yeah. straightforward. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thanks. <coughs> Excuse me, the 11.8 is the Mackay Region uh, Planning Scheme. And once again, <coughs> this planning scheme is a live document. Uh, there's, a, there's rolling updates as we have every uh, council meeting, basically. Minor amendments to the planning scheme. Are there questions on this? It's a pretty good report, fairly well straightforward. Would somebody like to move its adoption, please? Councillor Cam moves. Councillor Mann seconds. Councillor Cam. Thank you, Worship. Uh, just as we adopted the Bakers Creek South Mackay Stormwater Trunk Infrastructure Study, this uh, this report is actually addressing that in the context of our planning scheme. Um, so it will be enshrined, and those residents that um, come and make inquiry under the scheme, uh, once these uh, these changes uh, have been submitted to the state and are approved, um, then that is what we will make planning decisions under. Thank you very much, Councillor Cam. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Let's move on to the re receipt of petitions now, and 12.1 uh, is a petition for request for construction of a footpath. And uh, the officer's recommendation is quite clear there, CEO, do you need to speak to this? It's pretty well straightforward. Are there questions for the CEO? Councillor Casey, you want to move the uh, adoption of the report? Yes, Seconded by Councillor Bella. Councillor Casey. Very straightforward, we accept it. Okay, thank you very much. I'll put the motion, those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Point, oh, sorry, 13 is tenders, 13.1, uh, tender number 43 for 2019 for preferred supplier arrangements. See, uh, no, I just very briefly hope it's self explanatory. Councillors, you'll see that's an increase of 5%, um, which is probably a little bit higher, but probably uh, indicative of where we are in the cycle in Mackay. So, uh, pretty straightforward. We've shared around the um, recommendations of the, the company. Unfortunately, there's no Mackay company. Um, tender, um, <coughs> hopefully straightforward. Questions for the CEO? Are there any questions? Somebody like to move? The report's adoption, Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor Walker. Councillor Mann. Oh, only to say, Your Worship, look, it is a very thorough process that always takes place, and I'm sure that you know, there are lots of factors um, uh, considered, so I'm very happy to support this. Thank you. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. <coughs> right, there's no notified motions. We've got uh, public participation now. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, I notice there's uh, a number of people wanting to, uh, to speak to us today. We adopted a new set of bylaws just recently for uh, the standing orders for a council uh, committee meeting. Uh, sorry, and any committee meeting for the council. So, any person invited to address the meeting, you've got to state your name and address and the matter that you wanted to address the council on. You've got to stand and act and speak with the quorum and, uh, and frame any remarks in a respectful and courteous language and keep, keep to the time frame. So you'll be given three minutes. This is not a debate with council. You cannot engage council. You'll be given three minutes and uh, I will fill you up at three minutes wherever you are in your statement. So, uh, so thank you very much for your attendance today. And uh, let's start with uh, Pamela Tinder. So if I may, is there any particular order? Yes, well, there is a different order. There's a different, well, okay. Right. Right. Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, looks like I'm first cap off the ring. 
Uh, I'm here today to draw your attention to keeping our dedicated war memorial pool open. In 1961 or 62, most of the air cadets were asked to sell tickets by door knocking in the suburbs to win a house in O'Keefe Street. We wore our uniform being a war memorial pool. It looked the part. I sold many books and I was at the opening of the pool in December 1963, also with Councillor Casey here. I and a couple of others started water polo competition. I was the first president and coached clubs and Mackay represented sides for about 10 years. It was the 50th anniversary last year for the water polo in Mackay. Four Townsends served and signed up from Finch Hatton. My great uncle Harry Townsend was on the Western Front in the First World War. I was honoured last year to be invited by the Finch Hatton RSL on Remembrance Day with my cousin, a granddaughter and myself. Harry Townsend was placed on the RSL Wall of Honour with 16 other soldiers from Finch Hatton. Uncle Sid Townsend was a Rats of Trabook. His name is on the monument down at Queen's Park. He also served in Papua New Guinea and the Pacific Islands. He never married due to war injuries. Uncle Jack Townsend was in the 8th Division, which was captured in Singapore and was a POW in Thailand, Burma Rail Line. My father, George Townsend, served in New Guinea, Pacific Islands and Borneo. Luckily, they all returned home to Mackay. My uncle Jack, being a POW, returned home with Berry Berry. He never married. He became very ill in 1963. He visited my parents' home before he went to Green Slopes Military Hospital in Brisbane. He knew I was selling tickets for the War Memorial Pool. He then said to me, son, here's a hundred quid to donate to the pool fund, he said. I don't want any tickets because where I'm going, I won't be deep the house. I just hope that the council can get that War Memorial Pool built before I pass on and you kids can use it. He never did see the pool finished. He died some months later in Brisbane. This pool is his legacy to the Townsend family and for all of the community to be proud of. I won many races at the high school in the old Slate Point Salt Pool. Dad said, you kids now have an Olympic pool to swim in. I am not sure if any of you here today have grown up with a father who come back from the war. I can tell you it's not very pretty. What those soldiers went through was unbelievable. They did not leave their misery up there, come home with them for many years. When you're only a small child and your father wakes up during the night screaming and yelling and trying to climb the walls, yelling out, and they're after me. If it wasn't the jacks, it was the snakes or the crocodiles after him. It was very frightening. He also had malaria attacks for a long time. I was to have Monty Edmonds here today with me in a wheelchair. He turned 95 last Saturday. He is the only one of a handful of soldiers from the New Guinea War still alive in Mackay. Those green hills and the New Guinea on the plaque represents that he and his platoon fought to the top of the well-known war story of Shaggy Ridge and captured a Japanese mountain gun which killed many of his mates. That gun is in South East Queensland Museum. He's not real well today with pneumonia, but he told me yesterday at the France of Assisi home that he will hold on until the council give the go-ahead to keep our dedicated war memorial pool open Thank forever you, in Mr. memory Townsend. of all Thank his mates. Much. Right. On Shaggy Reed. Graham, thank you very That's much. It. Thank you very Sorry, much. 30. I've given you 30 seconds over, so thank you very much. Can you state your name and address when you stand up, ladies and gentlemen? So who's the second one? I think it's me. I've got my own stopwatch. Um, good morning, Mayor, Mr Mayor and Councillors. I'm uh, Leanne McCary from Mackay Site Plans, Unit 9, 24, 26 River Street. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of our, our 44 members and 20 plus casual swimmers. Uh, their parents, their grandparents, friends and supporters. We have a large contingent of young swimmers, national representation and a lot of young developing swimmers supporting our Mackay region and we need to reciprocate and offer them our support. We faced a huge battle to get to this point to find water. We've ha uh, had a pre-existing pre MOU over Pioneer Pool, preventing our, our sporting bodies to train athletes with a coach in a public facility. Individuals could go in with the program but not the coach. Previously, C setting swimmers, uh, letting swimmers, myself and community down uh, public pool access. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be um, invited by Happy Days and we went out to Bob and Rainy Pool, who invited us and looked after us in that time. Uh, we've, we've grown and we need more space. Enter Memorial at the time and GPS. We had to begin, begin the meeting process all over again uh, just to get more space. Enter new management team, Belgravia, and we finally find a home. We finally have a relationship with uh, Belgravia. We have a financial commitment and understanding that we can pursue our swimmers and have a home base for these kids. 
Now we suddenly face the prospect of losing this pool. Um, if this happens, I'm unsure of how we would work two pools from Pioneer, uh, two different clubs, two, two lanes each, or possibly three. Learn to swim pool, uh, learn to swim with Belgravia, and then two lanes to the public. And that will take up the usage, and then you'll have demand uh, depending on the season. CQ is a wonderful facility, I don't argue that fact. It will not house a club out there. We won't have, um, we've got nine sessions a week, we're on a different format to what some, some people have. We have nine sessions a week, two to three lanes, two to three hours per session all year round. Um, in the event that CQ should sort of close for a week and a major event comes into play, uh, we're at, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, the programs in place would have to stop and we have no easy go. So if we're in a major competition phase, and training program, training regime, those swimmers lose a week of fitness, lose what they've been training for, game over. So all I ask is that we consider, um, we've worked very hard to get to this pool. Our swimmers have worked very hard, our parents and families and friends have worked very hard to find this space. And we're just trying to, at this phase, we, we have our home, we have our base. If you close this pool, we have nowhere else to go. We have no home. End of story for all these swimmers in our club. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. So number three, who's the third person? That's me, Nigel Dalton, Nine Town Street, Shaw Point. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council, for this time. Uh, all the cities I will list have swimming pools within walking distance of their CBD. These are really important for people who want to swim just briefly before work, during work, and after work. Short periods of ex exercise are extremely useful, and new research is now showing that this short period of exercise is actually more beneficial than a long period of exercise for, for older people. That research comes from Dr. Krauss in Duke University, North Carolina. These are the pools along the east coast of Queensland, or the cities which have pools which are very, very close to the CBD. Trebrook Memorial Pool Cairns, Trebrook Memorial Baths, uh, Townsville, Second World War Memorial Pool, Rockhampton, Gladstone Aquatic Centre, Anzac Park, Bundaberg, Maryborough War Memorial Pool, Noosa Aquatic uh, Centre, and obviously further south, south you'll get many, many more uh, pools. Why should Mackay lose their inner city's CBD pool and prevent this vital exercise for our community? Further to that, in 2013, the previous council invited Stephen Yarwood to a meeting here, and if, I imagine that some of the councillors here were present whilst he was uh, talking. He said that Mackay lacked green spaces. He said the top tips for Mackay were plant more trees. You have plenty of them around the, the memorial pool. Enjoy the, uh, creating spaces which can be enjoyed. We all enjoy using the memorial pool. Get involved and don't let the council solve everything. It's there, you don't have to solve anything. We want uh, uh, to say that planting trees reduce the city temperature. He, he goes on to say that planting trees reduces the city's um, temperature. So removing a significant green space of trees in the Moro Pool is against Yarwood's advice. He was the he was the ex-mayor of Adelaide. The poor decision taken by council will be remembered by many generations. Please leave a memorial legacy for all. Fix it up to its former glory. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's uh, number where are four. Yes. Um, good morning. Um, my, na um, my name is Pauline Barr, one um, Mulherrin Street East Mackay. And I'm just speaking on behalf of Keith Payne, who can't be here today because he's in Townsville. Um, so Keith, um, he is a Victoria Cross recipient, OAM, and is committed to ensuring that the Mackay Memorial Swimming Centre continues to be a living war memorial for future generations to enjoy. The war memorial plaque remains were originally placed at the entrance to Memorial Swimming Centre, 2 Milton Street, Mackay. Archdeacon J.H.R. Innes offered a prayer dedicating the centre as a memorial to the fallen at opening at open, sorry, on the 14th of December 1963. That funding is sourced to refurbish this valued war memorial. Keith Payne is a local Mackay resident. At meeting on the 26th of October 2018 with the Mackay Regional Council, Council Mayor Greg Williamson, 
and CEO Craig Doyle, he advised he will commence a fundraising campaign himself to ensure the future of the Mackay War Memorial Swimming Centre if required. I'm just here in support of the um, keep of keeping the um, pool open, um, and that's all I have. To say. Thank you, Floyd. Uh, next speaker, please. Who's the next? Um, good morning, all. My name's Robin Ware, um, Unit 195, 206 Phillips Street, in our present. Uh, the Memorial, the Mackay War Memorial Swimming Pool, is a living war memorial dedicated to those who served our country and returned and those who didn't. To bring about the demise of the Memorial Pool would be like a dagger in the heart of those who served and those in the community who worked tirelessly to raise the funds towards the construction of this pool. This memorial pool was designed to provide service to the living and to be a tribute to the dead. The emphasis on the value of living memorials is for their continued use and not demise. With so many soldiers returning home from war with injuries and mental trauma, there was a drive by governments and local communities to construct pools to help repair and build their broken bodies through improving their physical condition which would then lead to an improved mental state. With a hot, humid climate, the construction of this pool also provided a safe place for families to relax and socialise. It is worth noting that the Mackay War Memorial Swimming Centre is listed on the Places of Pride National Register of War Memorials and is also on the Queen, uh, Queensland War Memorial Register. I would also like to emphasise that the Memorial Pool is situated on state government land and the Mackay Council of the day was appointed as trustees or caretakers. It took a mammoth effort of community fundraising to establish this pool, so therefore it is only right to keep it operational and fully maintained. At its present site, the Memorial Pool is perfectly positioned to provide aquatic facilities for future CBD residents, workers, school children and the travelling public. I'm sure most people here today would have a past relative who has served our country and I think the least we can do in memory of their contribution is to continue to uphold the value of this facility and what it stands for. And finally, numerous members of the public have made the following comment at the possible closure of the memorial pool. I raised the money, I sold the tickets for the house raffle how dare they? Thank you. Thank you very much. From next speaker. Good morning, Mayor and Councillors. My name is Jeanette Baruja and I live at 5 Morgan Court, Royal View. Um, this morning I'd like to read out a letter from the RSL Cuttable Subdivision, which outlines two resolutions that were passed in a general uh, meeting of the Cuttable RSL subbranch on 26 September. Uh, 2018. Resolution 1, and it was moved by Robin Paskins, the Cuttable RSL sub-branch supports the continued operation of Memorial Mackay War Memorial Pool in its present location for the ongoing use by future generations of the Mackay community, the school, sporting and fitness groups, and to this end the pool should be completely refurbished as soon as funds can be successfully obtained. And the second resolution, which was moved by Lane Lister, um, supports the Cuttable, uh, uh, Cuttable RSL sub-branch supports leaving the War Memorial, Memorial plaque where it's located at the entrance of the War Memorial pool in Milton Street and should not be removed. And that's regards Terry Maloney. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Next speaker. Is there anybody else? Yes. Okay, thank you. Just your name and address, please. Sure. My name is Lorraine Elkhausen and I live in Kerrisdale Crescent at Beaconsfield. I'm the granddaughter of George Milton, a notable mayor and alderman in his time, when funds to build a memorial were collected from the Mackay people. I will address three points on the convenience of location and suitability of memorial where ARC is not suitable. The circles drawn in its strategic plan show that the city is over-serviced and therefore memorial should be closed. 
However, residences, residents are not where people spend the majority of their daylight hours. People go to work, do volunteer work, do shopping, drink coffee. Children go to school, leaving their homes with no one at home. Therefore, rely, relying on the strategic circles is really unrealistic. Workers, service personnel, retirees, disabled, mothers, and school children numbering thousands are all within the CBD during full opening hours and use it accordingly. That's my first point. My second point says, while the new art is very impressive, it's not suitable for many of the patrons of the memorial. For example, the depth at the ark is two metres, which means you can't stand. What does that mean? At ark, those who need to stand, like children attempting to do their first 50 metre race at a carnival, or learning to swim 50 metres, who need to touch the bottom when they don't quite make it, um, won't be able to be, uh, participate because I'll be too scared and they won't progress. Swimmers who are cramping or want to need to take a break, who, they won't be able to stand when required. Not everyone's a strong, confident swimmer. Not everyone can do 50 metres in one go. People who have rehab and ongoing programs, including walking and exercise, who need to stand and need chest deep water, such as myself and others, they can't do that at ARC because the 20 metre pool is too shallow for that. So returning to my circles and numbers of patrons in the city locations, this is my third point, during the week, my concern is this, just how are the service employees, workers, mums or retirees who are going shopping, going to swim without a pool in the city? How are the school children going to be able to cope who don't dare to swim 50 metres or the ones who walk to the pool without a pool? How are the disabled going to cope being denied access to a suitable pool? And how are the residents who do other business and swim all in one trip or within the city limits going to cope with no pool if you close it? Please keep the memorial pool open, even if it means going ahead with the aquatic strategy you could just amend it to delete reference to closing the memorial and or add a clause to maintain it and in the longer term to totally refurbish it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, our bylaws require you as a must to register if you're going to public uh, participate in public participation in the council. We've had a couple of people uh, that didn't register. so. If, you, if you're not in the, on the register, um, you need to let David know. Oh no, David's gone. Uh, he's got the yeah. Okay, so who's the, ne who's the next speaker? We've all registered. 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 Every one of us. Well, yeah, okay. Number two on the list, you guys. Sue Dalton, you're next. Lorraine, okay, so thank you. Perfect. Good morning. Um, my name's Sue Dalton, number 9, Tannen yeah. Street. Thank you. Um, so my, my, I'm just very briefly want to talk about the, some of the reports that have been commissioned by the council, not yourselves, former councils, obviously. Uh, one in 2010 stated that the Memorial 50 metre pool structure appears stable and concrete cause of indicated sound dense concrete. Um, on that same report, it was recommended that the tile finishes should be replaced in the medium term, two to five years. It wasn't done. Um, we then look at the 2017 report. Um, which recommended the repair and replacement of concourse, concrete and steel fixings, um, disabled hoist, and stripping and retiling of the pool, demolition of the floor, returns and replacement with modern fittings. None of these things have been done. So the problem is that the pool, as it stands, appears to be falling apart and therefore a good excuse to close it. But actually, if these recommendations had been carried out at the time, this pool would be something to be proud of. And I think this council um, could be the one to stand up and say, we're going to do these, these works, which this pool serves. Thank you very much, Sue. Thank you. Who's the next speaker? Um, Sue Dalton, thank you. Uh, Ariel, I'm going to Street, 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 Street. 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 So I'd like to share a letter from George Christensen, federal member for Dawson. Um, this was delivered to the committee 
Uh, Monday the 26th of November 2018. Dear committee, thank you for taking the time to attend my office on the 15th of November and deliver the presentation outlining the historical significance of the Mackay War Memorial Pool. Thank you for outlining all the value the facility offers to the Mackay community with the data you presented. On the basis of that, I am 100% in support of the pool staying open and for the public to be able to utilise the facility. You have highlighted some maintenance that that facility does require, and I understand this type of work would be suitable for the Building Better Region program. If the Mackay Regional Council wanted to look at funding through the Building Better Region program, I would be happy to assist with the application process Kind regards, signed George Christensen, MP, Federal Member for Dawson, um, and the committee did forward this letter to all um, members of the Mackay Regional Council. And um, on a personal note, as a town pool, it is tired and run down, but um, as a war memorial, it's, it's a bit of an embarrassment. So thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Uh, Mr Hayes. Oh, no. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> I, I'm Terry Hayes, 89 Donaldson Street. And representing Mackay RSL sub -branch. The Memorial Swimming Pool stands as a shining example of cooperation between the Council and the citizens. In the years before 1963, Mackay was widely known as a progressive city, but one which lacked the basic amenity, the public swimming baths. It was not because the people did not want them, Dating back to 1881, there have been at least nine proposals from both individuals and organisations for the construction of swimming bars. They had all elapsed, many of them because of rejection by the council at the time. But by 1962, there were three impelling in incentives for the council to give heed to the voice of the people. The first was a terrible shark attack at Lambert's Beach on the 28th of December 1941, 1961. The second was the uh, sudden appearance of the stingers in our, at our beaches. And the third was the very high proportion of ex-service men and ex-service women in the community. It was possible in those days to walk into practically any establishment in Mackay and come in contact with a veteran of World War II. As well, there were still a good number of World War I veterans around, some of them holding important public positions. And there were also and the veterans on the councils of the time, and certainly many veterans in the, among the council employees. This strong section of the community was warmly supportive of the Citizens Committee's advocacy of a memorial pool. And the opening of the pool was Mackay's promise to the veterans of our lasting gratitude for their sacrifices to keep this land a free Australia and especially to those who had given their lives for it. And it was a guarantee that the memorial pool would remain as the city's proud tribute to them. The pool is located on what should be a very distinctive site. And I'm sure that within the council of today, there is enough of vision and resources to transform the pool into a notable landmark and into visible evidence that we are proud of our military heritage and that we have not forgotten. Thank you very much, Terry. Next speaker. Good morning, and thanks for your time this morning. I'm Maxine Godley, 14 Thompson Court, Havana. I'm reading emails on behalf of two schools. Email from the principal of Mackay State High School, dated 5th of March 2019. Were the memorial pool to close, it would be a major loss underlined to the students and staff at Mackay State High School. Not only do we hold our inter-house swimming carnival at the centre, but more importantly, the pool is regularly used throughout the year to carry out lessons for several subjects. <coughs> swimming lessons, some year seven to 10 classes. Marine science, 
year 11 and 12 students doing water safety activities for weekly lessons, term four. Aquatic practices, year 11 and 12 classes doing water safety activities, term one. Phys education, year 11 and 12 classes doing aquathon over several lessons, term four. These classes would need to be reloc relocated to another facility, causing the need then to transport students and staff on each of these occasions, and also the cost increase for these students. At present, the students and staff walk to the activities due to the local nature of the memorial pool to our school, underlined. Should the council decide to close the facility, this would have a significant impact on the learning of the students in the wide number of classes which benefit from the facility and the proximity of it, allowing staff and students to walk to attend. Steve Porter, Principal Mackay State High School, Milton Street. Email from Mercy College Mackay, dated 6th of March, 2019. Our memorial pool has been a case of conspicuous neglect over the last 10 years. A better located facility for schools, I cannot imagine. The new facility at the university will be most welcome and certainly accessed by Mercy College, as we are regular users of the pools for a number of aquatics units. This city, however, needs three facilities and a coordinated response to the opportunity to build the profile for swimming in a regional centre. We have not scratched the surface in adult fitness, events, training squads, and education use for our public pools. A bit of vision backed up by practical strategy is much needed, but I'm sure council is aware of and planning for this. Lastly, I would make the obvious point. This is a memorial pool. You don't close memorials. If you do, expect a huge public backlash and deservedly so. This of course should have been thought through before the building of the new facility. Refurbishment is the appropriate option. Mackay will have an aesthetic and useful facility in the city hub. Doing otherwise would be like the former suggestion to move the showgrounds out of town, wisely avoided. And now we have an attractive and multi-use area in the centre of town. Thank you, Max. That's, uh, that's three minutes th 35, so that's two. thank you. Thank you. Okay, so who's the next speaker? Sue. Sue Willett, 16 Morris Court, Andergrove. Yeah. Community concerns were raised in July last year when Council announced that only a short 12-month contract was, would be given to our Law Memorial Swimming Centre. At that time and on other occasions since Mayor Greg Williamson, you have stated that no decision has yet been made on the future of the CBD pool and that the short-term contract was a way to ensure flexibility once Council adopts its aquatic strategy. This aquatic strategy is about to be adopted. You will all very shortly cast your vote deciding the future of our Mont War Memorial Swimming Centre. Mackay Regional Councillors, if you are serious about encouraging fitness, you should do all that you can to keep the Mackay War Memorial Swimming Centre operational into the future. As you are well aware, this iconic facility has not been maintained for many years. For a very long time, the rejoinder of there is no money in the budget for Memorial has sounded like the proverbial broken record stuck in the same groove. Memorial Swimming Centre is a community asset which is worth keeping and should be recognised by Council as a health resource rather than just considered an ageing facility and an old pool past its use by date. This terminology could be applied to many of us in this room as we start to cost more to maintain. <laughs> should we too be decommissioned, disrespected and disregarded? This centrally located facility is a critical piece of infrastructure for all levels of swimmers in our community and improves the livability of Mackay City by providing a social and health benefit to those who use it. What cost does Council put on these benefits? As we grow as a community, we need new facilities such as the Ark, but why tear down history in the process? How does opening one facility and closing another promote growth? Industry Queensland recently predicted the Mackay City population to grow to 155,000 by 2031. Mackay War Memorial Swimming Centre is perfectly positioned to provide aquatic facilities 
for future CBD residents and workers. As our local government, you are our service providers, your community. Isn't this why we pay our rates? Supporters of the Mackay War Memorial Swimming Centre have vowed to cast their votes only for those councillors who wish to preserve this important piece of Mackay history in the next local government elections in March 2020. Those present here today are just the tip of the iceberg. There are many constituents who believe that this iconic facility should be a priority for council and that it has been deliberately neglected. Our War Memorial Swimming Centre should be prioritised for refurbishment to ensure that it thrives into the future. Which of you will vote yes to for keeping our Memorial Swing Centre open and receiving a much deserved refurbishment? Do you want to be remembered by the community throughout this region as the only council in Queensland who closed their dedicated living War Memorial Swimming Pool? If you remove these spaces from a city, you continue to erode our community and why we want to live here. Is it a case of let best we, less we forget or best we forget? Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Next speaker, please. Carol, thank you. Carol Single, Sillingardis Road, Wilson, thank you. I find it very disappointing that the Mackay Regional Council has neglected our Mackay War Memorial Swimming Pool and conducted very limited maintenance for the last 10 years. Extensive research of MRC documents has revealed flaws in the recording of attendance figures dating as far back as 2008-9 annual reports. Again, why has the council not applied for the federal and state government that's been available over those 10 years? Nothing. The Mackay Telegraph recorded a photo of our mayor signing our petition on the 31st of the March, 2012. Our petition then stated, the Mackay War Memorial Swimming Pool will be reopened seven days per week immediately with extended hours, and we support a total upgrade and refurbishment of the Mackay War Memorial Swimming Pool. On the 13th of June 2012, in this room, this, uh, the petition was presented with 6,500 signatures to our council. The memorial was leased in 2013, and the documents state that a two million saving was made to council, yet not one cent of this money was spent on upgrades to the memorial. Three separate engineering reports all identify the memorial as structurally sound. The Mackay Regional Council Aquatics Strategy draft report August 18 shows memorial operating costs 1718 at $491,155. It also states these operation trends are summarised in error. Reference source not found, and the figure does not include employee costs. No one has been able to explain, and we've asked everyone we've met, what does this mean? The Mackay Regional Council annual report 1718 which came out in December, shows amenities refurbishments took place at the Memorial Pool with works for Queensland funding. We're waiting for a report to show where we can't see anything. The, re the council minutes on the 27th of February 19 record 1,096 people swam at the Memorial in January 19. The figures supplied on Friday actually total 3,900. February 19 figures given Friday total were shown as 2,288. The correct total is actually 5,794. And missing from that report is 750 students from the Milton Strait High School Carnival, 250 students from Mackay Christian College Carnival, and the line for, for visit pass patronage is zero. So anyone with a pass was not recorded in February. Why? The estimated figure for February for the people that visited our memorial pool was at least seven and a half thousand for February, not the 2,298 in the report. Going back to 0809, and I know it's old hat, the attendance figures recorded were 118,000. Yet when transcribed to the following year comparison report, 39,736 swims were deleted Carol, thank you the very figures. much. That's uh, gone three minutes and 15, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there a next speaker? Yep. Uh, Mayor, councillors, staff, I'm Pamela Tingdale, 8 Fields Avenue, Mount Pleasant. Thank you to those councillors who have given a firm commitment to vote to retain this war memorial. It must be this current council which decides the fate of this icon of Mackay CBD. Why? Because this is the council who commissioned an aquatic strategy 
wherein the only recommendation in relation to this pool is to close it. We have been advised that strategy, along with other surveys, has cost ratepayers around one quarter of a million dollars. If the issue around this war memorial drags on past the life of this council, the next group of councillors will say, as some here present have repeatedly, that it didn't happen during my time, or I have to believe figures presented to me, or worst of all, I don't know. I apologise to the councillor at whom I raised my voice yesterday in response to yet another of those answers, but it was just one time too many for me. Not during my time just does not cut it because this is your time. Most people stand for council to make a difference, so please do make a difference. It is the duty of elected representatives to educate and inform themselves on issues on which they vote. It's part of a council officer's job to supply information to councillors, and officers are culpable if informational figures are incorrect. The days of roads, rates, and rubbish are far behind us, and although those items retain their importance, councils with vision for the future know that community, amenity, and livability are vital. At the opening of the new aquatic and athletics complex on Saturday, the Mayor quite rightly said that facility had been eight years in the making. Meanwhile, this war memorial has been 10 years in the breaking. The Mayor and Councillors Karen May, Justin Englert and Kevin Casey signed the petition supporting a total upgrade and refurbishment of this war memorial. Are you aware this is the only pool in Queensland to carry the title of war memorial that has not been refurbished. The CEO advised us on Friday that council is responsible for all maintenance of this war memorial other than minor jobs. Do you really want to go down in history as the council whose negligence in relation to a war memorial on the places of pride national register led to its desecration and destruction? Thank you. Thanks, Pamela. Another speaker? Yes, Okay, uh, Walter Anderson, my understanding is coal. Um, I'm on Bowling Road, Road, Kamala. I've just retired from after 25 years in the council. I'm also ex -Nightic. Um As is every male member of my family, going back as far as we can trace, that is, <coughs> my brother. Uh, I had three uncles who fought in the Middle East and came back with their unit to fight against the Japs in New Guinea. I had the honour of serving in D Company 6RIR, who, as you know, or at least you should know, fought in the Battle of Romitan, in which 18 of the company were killed and 24 were wounded. My military family would be abhorrent if I did not get up here and stand up for what they have put on the line for you guys, for freedom that you guys sit here with now. There's a lot of people paid their lives for the enjoyment you've enjoyed today. Just reaffirming what Sue and Pam said, do you really want to go down as a council, one of the first councils to bulldoze a war memorial? Do you know what really bothers me? Really bothers me is uh, even if you change your minds, if you don't go down this road and change, you know, keeping the memorial pool. It won't be a moral one because you wouldn't be thinking about doing this otherwise. There's something about bulldozing a war memorial that really chokes and gets cut off. Um, that's why I say on the subject. Thank you. Thanks, Walt. Another speaker? That's it. That's it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.
Uh, 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 no, I'm sorry, there's, there's no, no, you can do that outside if you like, but if there's no chance to interact, you can do it through the CEO. Thank you very much. Um, so, late business. Sorry, late business. Councillor May. Mr May, thank you very much. Um, I really just wanted to um, present to you the silver award that the Serena Sugar Shed was able to um, achieve at the Australian Tourism Awards the other weekend when Councillor Mann and myself and the coordinator travelled to Launceston to, um, to be present at those awards. We were one of 830 people that were present at Cataract Gorge to, um, to be part of those tourism awards. Our neighbours at Whit Sunday also did extremely well at the awards with um, businesses in their area picking up two gold and two silver awards. So overall, it's a fantastic um, recognition of, of a small town south of Mackay um, with a fantastic facility that has contributed to the, the greater good and the greater well-being of the Mackay region for the past 12 years. And a silver award at an Australian tourism event for excellence in food tourism is no simple feat. So on behalf of Councillor Mann and myself, I present to you our um, silver award. Thank you very much, Councillor Mann. <coughs> no well done, no, no, no. Total congratulations. I will this is, do. This is uh, absolutely outstanding. So thanks very much. And uh, you know, the, uh, the Serena Sugar Shed has picked up a lot of awards over the last couple of years. And it's just an example of the tremendous staff we have down there and the vision of putting that up. So thank you very much. So well the done. staff, the volunteers and the coordinator. Fantastic job. Uh, any other late business? <laughs> Councillor Bella. Um, I just wish to speak to a, for a moment to uh, say how pleased I am on our first uh, live streamed meeting. Um, this is more than I envisaged, envisaged when I first raised the notified motion regarding full recording of meetings and despite uh, considerable trepidation from other members of the council um, and thanks to the support of a couple um, and especially the CEO to actually get to the point where um, we have live stream which gives people the opportunity to see what goes on in here um, and once again moves towards something I committed to long ago which was absolute clarity in what we try and do. I think it's a Sorry. wonderful thing. Thanks very much Councillor Bella. I mean, it's it's not late business, but I'll take the point. Thank you. Um, are there, is there any other late business? Yeah, no, other late business? Thank you very much. Let's move on now to, we've got a couple of confidential reports to uh, consider. So would somebody move that the meeting be closed to the public? Councillor Mann, uh, sorry, Councillor Cam moves. Councillor Casey seconds. Those in favour? Here you go. It's carried. Thank you very much. <coughs> and that would... Uh, <laughs> That would involve now the, um, the closing of...